What's up, everyone? Welcome back. I got a special guest. I got Brandon DeRoach. He's done like pretty much everything. He contributed to the Huffington Post for a long time. Saw he was in the indie band. And he actually started a social media company called Propeller. That's more of a... It's like building goodwill on social media is what my understanding of it is. But I'm not going to share the secret. I'm going to let Brandon talk about that. Uh, what I found most interesting about Brandon being in the indie band is he misses playing guitar in front of a crowd, but doesn't miss the band days in the van. <laughs> <laughs> so happy to have him on. What, what what was the name of the indie band? I I, I couldn't remember. So the band was called The Underwater. And there are there are some times I miss being in the van. But, um, you know, in large part, I'm I'm happy not to do that as much. But I do miss playing shows. Yeah, I've uh, I've met a lot of people that have played shows and they're just like, when you get in front of that crowd, it, there's, you can't, they can't explain the feeling that you get when you're just performing in front of a crowd. It, like, the adrenaline, the energy that you're feeling from the crowd is definitely something special. And it's definitely easy to see why people love performing in front of uh, raging fans. So. It's certainly a rush. And I think that, you know, maybe like athletes have similar experiences when they're playing games and stuff, but um, it's, it's certainly like hard to compare to both playing with a band, even if that's just at a rehearsal, as well as doing it, you know, in a live setting with a, with an attentive crowd. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And being that you were in a band, then uh, you Worked in digital marketing. You worked at another, you've co founded something called the Urgency Network, and then were contributor to the Huffington Post. What was the one thing that you learned being in a band that's helped translate to your success now, if you could pinpoint that? It's a good question. I think that the, the thing that I picked up at being in a band really was that at, at, if you're an artist, almost at any level, you have a platform and you know my band days were 2002 to 2008 so it was kind of you know it was pre facebook pre even myspace for part of it and um so it wasn't really looking at it from like the social media perspective but you know especially when we used to tour like europe for example you're going from country to country and you're doing radio interviews and you're um playing to these people that like want to meet you and all these things that we were not a big artist but I saw that you had this opportunity, even at that level, to use that platform for something positive. And that's really like what inspired me to go down the path that I did. And when I didn't think that my band was going to like get to the level that I we had hoped and to, you know, really be able to make that impact, I was inspired still by the power that other artists have to um, use their platform for something positive. And so that really became my sort of personal mission was to go and essentially be a cheerleader for artists and and try and push them to do more and and use that platform in in um responsible and um impactful ways. Yeah, cuz I you you've done things for Sir Paul McCartney, Sir Richard Branson, Skrillex and being that obviously you didn't you never got to their level. However, you have been in their shoes in terms of being on the road, playing gigs, and experiencing the same things that they experience, despite obviously like, you know, there's not many people who can say they're even close to Paul McCartney, uh, right. maybe like Elton John, maybe yes. Elton John and Paul McCartney could be in the same light. So how like, were you able to take your experience to help it translate to uh, working with th those sort of people that are like probably well, an A plus list? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think to your point, like there, it's not, I can't, say that like I've ever experienced anything like they have with fame and stuff like that um, that's just a whole different level but you do get a sort of glimpse into what that's like you do get a glimpse that you know even if your decision making and stuff as an artist is a, on a much smaller level you're still getting you know there there is certainly a comparison to be made as far as like how you feel as an artist and what goes into um, that sort of thinking and so I think at the very least I could say that I learned um, you know how artists do think in a lot of ways and what might, you know, they might be looking for um, and, you know, how they decide what they want to put their name behind or anything like that versus just what their manager might think or someone else on their team or what have you. And just being able to relate to them in that way, I think has um, 
been helpful for me in in doing this type of work. Right, because Propeller has to do with social impact. So what sort of things were you working on with these artists to use their platform to make that social impact? Is that something you could talk about? Yeah, sure. I mean, I think that, um, you know, in the like the people that you mentioned and stuff, that was pretty early days for me. And um, it always kind of varied on like specifically what type of causes that they wanted to support, you know, with like, I think both with like Branson and um, Paul McCartney as around environmental causes specifically. But um, really what I think that my expertise became was just around like, how do you engage your fans with that? Here's what you want to support. Now, how do you engage your fans? Because, you know, even back to 2008, when I started doing this work, um, there was not like, you, you you couldn't really just rely on the goodwill. You know, yes, some fans, if you tell them, hey, please go support this cause, like they might do it. But really what I was trying to do is work within the reality of like, what is the actual motivation of the fan to go do it? And why they are on your Facebook page, for example, was not because of the causes you supported. It was because they were a fan of your music, most likely. And so, um, you know, artists would post about a cause and they wouldn't get that much. Um, they it wouldn't be that impactful versus what um, the type of stuff that I started doing was around you know, giving the fans the opportunity to meet the artist or to win tickets to their show or get some sort of memorabilia item. Or when it first started, it was around getting downloads of exclusive music from those artists, which, you know, eventually became null and void when when streaming became the, the dominant way to get your music. And it was essentially, you know, free to in people's eyes anyway. But um, but putting that incentive into the equation um, where you gave those fans the opportunity to get closer to the artist for for taking that action um, was a night and day difference as far as the impact that that artist can make. And so that was really sort of the the root of the work that that I've been doing around generating that engagement with the fans around causes that the artists cared about. So would that be like contributing to a cause and enter you're entered in to win a meet and greet with? whomever that artist might be. Exactly. And I mean, like it, it doesn't always have to be that, but like with, Pro with propeller specifically, like that's a lot of what we do is those sort of sweepstakes kind of experiential type of campaigns where you can take an action and be entered to win a trip to, you know, meet Justin Bieber in Paris or whatever it is. And um, those actions can be things like donating money, but we have a lot of, ways that you can support a cause that are non-monetary, such as signing a petition or even just learning about the cause, watching awareness videos, sharing, you know, sharing information with your friends on socials and really anything we can track, we can turn into an action and then incentivize it through, through those types of experiences and other rewards. Have you like, have you studied like the psychological reasons of doing these things to get people to take action? Is that something you've that you're like thought into and well learn. yes i mean by a lot of trial by fire so you know just doing the work and uh, that all started with just educated guesses i guess you can say it wasn't any i didn't you know i chose the path of playing in the band versus going to school so i didn't go to college i don't have any sort of degrees or anything like that um interestingly interestingly enough though we are working with the university right now in their behavioral sciences division around a lot of um a lot of this work and actually putting um, you know, an acad academic ac <laughs> academic stamp behind it as far as um, determining what are intrinsic versus extrinsic motivations of the users on our platform. And I think that that's been really fascinating to see that, um, you know, it is being taken seriously by a university to to see how we can, um, you know, take the baseline of what we're doing and what's working and then, and then improve it further um, based on certain levers we're able to pull on what the true motivation is of our, our audience. Yeah, it reminds me of the lottery. Why do people play the lottery even though their chances of winning are so small? Yeah, I think that you know sweepstakes are very comparable to a lottery mentality, and I think that um, we try and create these sweepstakes that you know the super fans of these artists like it just would be a dream for them to have it come true, where they could actually win, and and we give them the motivation to go and. Um, increase their chances of winning by taking more and more actions to support the cause. And so that's really what comes down to is you put that carrot out in front of like, you know, something you really would want 
to experience a meet and greet type of opportunity and then give them ways that they can um they still just it's still being left to chance but similar to buying more and more lottery tickets you can improve your chances of winning by the more impact you're creating right now is is propeller similar to instagram or a platform i was playing around on it and i was um i saw like what like the different things i saw someone just one like a meet and greet with tiesto in mexico like i saw i saw what was going on but for someone who isn't familiar with propeller like walk us through how that how your platform works for someone who would like to get involved yeah i'd say not really similar to instagram or social media platform i mean that like where it goes potentially there'll be more things that are in line with that but currently um, we really leverage social media platforms to drive traffic and to bring in the the fans of these artists and influencers to take action and enter to win different experiences and so forth. So it's more of a promotional tool for us. But um, but Propeller itself, I, we would describe as a digital marketing platform for causes. And so the idea with Propeller from the user perspective is that you can go onto the platform you can take action. You know, I described some of that a second ago around like what those actions are. Every action you're taking on the platform is a way to earn points. And then those points can be redeemed for entries towards winning these big sort of sweepstakes experiences or just to re redeem them directly. Like we have certain rewards, like say concert tickets, where if you have enough points, um, you can just redeem them directly for that reward that you're getting. And so there's all sorts of different ways that we're incentivizing people to um to take action for these groups. And it's really just a way because we live in such a, you know, uh, uh, you know, so many different interests competing for people's attention. And there's a lot of people that really do care about causes, but they don't know where to begin. They don't know, you know, what organizations do what they don't know even where to start. And it's like a lot of research that might have to go into it. And because of that, and so many things that are, are taking their attention away from that, they might not ever do that. And so by offering them something that they care about as far as, you know, experience with an artist or influencer, um, we're able to capture that attention and then start, you know, pushing them towards things that, um, you know, these causes that are important. And hopefully through that process, we just, you know, we like to think of it as a gateway to activism. We're giving people, you know, a little taste of, uh, you know, might, might, might be the first time they've donated to an organization or it might be the first time they've signed a petition. And from there, um, a lot of our users have, you know, can kind of go down a rabbit hole and start discovering all kinds of organizations and ways that they can support them. Was there some sort of event that sparked the the thought for you to start this thing? It honestly has been such a um, evolution of and hodgepodge of ideas and and influence from a number of different things that. Um, we've seen over the years and things that we've uh, just been able to sort of, yeah, find what works. And I think that, I don't know that, you know, I think Propeller is constantly evolving. Like it feels, we say it, it just like feels like we're in a jazz band. It's like, you know, you're reacting to what's going on in the world as far as from the cause standpoint. Um, and then also as far as the tactics, just with technology moving as fast as it does, like, something that might've worked a year ago might not work now. And, and so we constantly are, are looking at what is the most current um, ways that we can engage people and, um, and motivate them to, to take these actions. And so it's not necessarily just one size fits all. And it's not always, it's, it's always, yeah, evolving in how we do that. So let's say I'm a suburban mom and I want to get people involved in something I'm passionate about, some sort of cause. Is there something, someone who may feel like they can't make a huge impact, they can't just like pull out their phone and be like, hey, like this is Sir Eldon John. I'm supporting XYZ organization. Click the link below to enter the winner meet and greet with me. Like, because there are a lot of good people out there and they feel like they can't make a difference. However, based on what I've researched about you and your company, everyone can make a difference. They just may not know how. Yeah, and I think that, I mean, we... I that's that's it right and then I think we're giving them those uh, sort of serving as like a clearinghouse for organizations and and actions that they can take that they can make a difference and the whole idea is rooted just in the you know 
um, strength in numbers, right? So we're not we're not trying necessarily to get people to come on and give thousands of dollars or like, you know, these major sort of donations or something like it does happen, but we're much more interested in, in the, you know, the, the strength in numbers and, you know, similar to any sort of crowdfunding where it, it might be, you know, there might be millions of dollars that can be raised, but it's, it's through an average of say $27 donations or something versus it being just, um, these major sort of gifts from, from individuals. And so no one's necessarily breaking the bank to do it. And our platform is um, predominantly young people. So predominantly like 18 to 35 year olds and a lot of people that might not have a large, you know, large financial means. And so um, it, it does come from a lot of small donations and a lot of people that sign these petitions and take these actions to combine to make a bigger impact. Lark. Large amounts of people can make a big difference, even if their impact, if you look at like one person, be like, oh, this is a small impact, $5. But if you get a million people to do $5, that's $5 million. Well, or yeah, exactly. And it's 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 the idea of people power, right? I mean, I think that a lot of the causes that we're supporting, we don't focus too much on what you would think of as traditional charity or philanthropy. It's much more around advocacy and actions. And so... Um, a lot of this where it's, you know, they might want to get bills passed or protected or what have you. And so it really requires buy-in from a lot of people versus it just being about one person coming in and making a large donation or something. It's really not, it's really not the change that we're focused on. Um, overall, it's much more about getting the, you know, building movements really and helping, helping foster um, uh, these different movements that, that are out there currently. What movement is most special to you that you all are working on right now that you're able to share with us? For me personally, uh, not speaking on behalf of everyone else, because I think it really does vary. We have certain causes that we, you know, we're a public benefit corporation, which I'm happy to talk more about what that means, but we're a public benefit corporation where we do have our own mission. And then we have certain sort of issue areas that we, we focus on year round. But um, so it, you know, that's all there. That's all on our site and people can and see what that is. But for me personally, I'm most passionate about um, the psychedelic movement, which is um, something that I think a lot of people haven't thought of historically as a cause, but it's a very growing movement and um, all relates back to mental health and, and wellness overall. And I really believe that um, change does begin within. And it's, so it's the idea of um, the more we can you know, people can heal in their own sort of mental health journeys. And, um, and I think a lot of the other sort of issues and problems that exist in the world, like would at least be reduced if um, people weren't dealing, didn't have as much of their own personal um, challenges to that they're that they're facing. And I think that the healthier minds that we have, the more, um, yeah, the more we'll see those other causes, just be less lessened overall, or um, they won't, they have potentially could be could be um, uh, not as as big of um, issues as they are today. Yeah, because pre internet, kids were made fun of. However, maybe limited to your class. Now, uh, some random nine year old in Omaha, Nebraska, posts a video. You can get a million mean comments, and that could be extremely overwhelming for someone whose brain isn't fully developed to to deal with. So for sure, like that's definitely something that uh, is constantly changing every single day with the world becoming bigger and bigger yet smaller. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm i sure there's a lot of fun and other benefits, but I do not envy, you know, people in high school or middle school today that, that have social media, I just can't even imagine what that's like today versus what it was like when I was in high school and it still wasn't, still wasn't a thing. Yeah. I saw on the news, they used AI to create, um, what's the right word? Not nice photos of like their colleagues and they were like circulating around the school. Oh, so awful. just using like crazy things like that, uh, which is still bullying. It's a uh, different level of bullying. It's taking things to a new level that uh, people don't have access to. 
And unfortunately, kids are kids are just mean because they don't understand. Yeah, they don't understand and... the impact that they're having on someone's uh, psyche. Yeah, for sure. I think as you get older, you start to realize that stuff more, or at least hopefully people do. And um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, and I think as far as what you're saying with AI and all that, we're just in the very beginning stages of deep fakes or whatever else that you're referring to there that is is definitely terrifying. Um, that, you know, who knows what's going to come out of that for people. Yeah. And with Propeller, where are the best places to find it for someone who wants to get involved? Uh, and what's the next event that you're having that someone could come be a part of? Um, our website is propeller.la. We're not, none of us are in LA. That was where the company started and we still just haven't changed the domain name. <laughs> but propeller.la is the website. And so you can go there, you can discover um, any of the different sort of prizes and experiences that we have that are currently available. Um, we are anticipating a very busy year. I think that, um, you know, 2020 was a major year of growth for us and just, you know, it tends to be in election years um, that, you know, are more volatile than than ever. Um, hate to say it, but like, you know, it tends to be what's sort of when those times are occurring um, are good for business, <laughs> for lack of a better way to put it, for a propeller, just because um, people people want to do something. They want to get involved. They want to motivate people to go vote. They They're just all kinds of things happening in the world that they're thinking about the you know the type of work that we do all all the time they're thinking about that more in a, in an election year and so um this year is just getting going obviously but we think that it's going to be um, a really really big year for us and so there's going to be all kinds of different things that we're involved in um there's a lot of different tours we'll be a part of there's we have a a program at red rocks amphitheater in colorado so we'll be at every red rocks event so if any of your um uh, listeners or viewers go to Red Rocks, they'll probably see Propeller's activation there. Um, and it's up on the top plaza. We're going to be at lots of different music festivals. So anything from Governor's Ball in New York to Bonnaroo here in Tennessee to um, uh, a lot of ones I can't say yet, but just a lot of major music festivals. And so I think that if you go to any music events specifically, there's a good chance you'll see Propeller at one of those this year. Awesome. Well, Brandon's doing it all in the activism music world and look out for the propeller tent at any music event that you're at. We'll see everyone next time. Bye everyone.